Hey everyone, this is the Untitled.jpg podcast where we talk about art, movies, and anything that comes to mind. So today we actually have Brian Rubio. He's a co-worker of mine and I've been wanting him to be on because he does graphic design. He's also an amazing photographer and I'm going to have him talk about that. What's up, Brian? What's up, man? Doing good, man. Doing good. I feel like I just worked with you a few hours ago. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's like we go from Slack and now we're here. Yeah, I know. It doesn't really change, especially now with how COVID is, you know, working from home, which isn't bad. You know, both both of us started both of us started a new job uh, from home without even knowing what the office looks like. Right. Kind of weird, but also cool. You know, I don't mind it. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's just takes time to get used to, especially like um, meeting the people that are coworkers and everything and only knowing their face and not yeah (laughs) being with them you know but um all right so let let's get into it so first tell us who you are and what you do and when did you start getting interested in like photography and design cool i mean um i got into i guess photography and design probably senior year of high school and um been kind of doing it ever since more designing um but photography, I definitely like dove deeper uh, when I got to college. So they gave us a couple of like 101 classes and it kind of like, you know, sparked the interest and um, kind of like started doing it just because I was part of groups and, and this and that. And like we had to kind of like emulate marketing strategies and stuff and kind of like follow through with these kind of like ideas and strategies that we have, you know, as like a a group project. And a lot of the times we had to like shoot a certain thing and no one in the group could really do it. So I kind of just picked it up and just started doing it myself and, and grew a little knack to it. So I stuck with it, started learning different systems and kind of like found myself just practicing. That's awesome. So what college did you end up going to, to like pursue? I went to City Tech, which is kind of like the um, downtown Brooklyn, uh, New York City College of Technology. Yeah. Um, And I went there for communication design. And how how was that experience there? Did you think you needed college for what you needed to do? Um, I'm kind of like up in the air just because the college experience is like, I'm not going to say it's not valuable, but it's like, it's very, you have to pick very, like, you have to pick things that are, are, that you find value in. They're not going to just give it to you, which is a kind of like a rude awakening where you think like, oh, college from college, you're just going to go straight to work and then take off from there. It's like, you're going to get the bullshit teachers. You're going to get the really good ones. And then you get the ones that like, you can kind of build a friendship and like a a, a network of like people that you know, that are like valuable to your life, you know? But um, I would say the most important thing about college was like learning how to use tools, like learning how to use Photoshop, how to use Illustrator, how to like pick up a camera and learn angles and and learned the uh, rule of thirds and all of this kind of, so I, I, I felt like I got that um, mostly from college. And, but from a social aspect, it was kind of like, you know, everybody had their click. Um, you, I, for me personally, I would just go in, do my shit and leave. Like I wouldn't hang around unless I had to. Yeah. It wasn't um, like a campus kind of. Yeah. It wasn't school, like, right? you know, you see like, in movies and everybody's hanging out and having a great time like you could choose to do that if you find you know your group but like for me it was like very different I just went took my classes went straight home and if I didn't have to do any extra like group projects where I had to stick around for a long time I would just go home I'm like I do not want to spend more time here (laughs) yeah I bet I feel that man I mean that was me in the beginning uh, like my first semester and then I had people that li- friends that lived in campus and everything and with FIT mm-hmm. like the school was there then across the street was the the dorms so it wasn't like a oh, big trip or anything so it was good to like kind of see that life but you definitely didn't need it and it was very similar in that sense because FIT was just a commuter school anyway mm-hmm. but um 
Yeah, I I also thought like when you I went into college that I was gonna have that like movie kind of experience yeah. of like a big <laughs> campus and everything, and then you were just yeah. gonna party everywhere. But FIT wasn't like that. I mean, the one good thing with with like a city school like that is like the whole city is your campus pretty much you know yeah the bars are just everywhere around it's not too hard to like travel so it wasn't too bad but um i do agree with you in a sense of like foundations and everything college was definitely important um Mm -hmm. but i mean if you're anybody like uh, some of the friends that i have had that went to a, a high school of art and design they had all those foundations then so like yeah. a lot of them that did go through that just say that college wasn't really necessary aside from maybe networking with uh, actual professors one-on-one yeah. that they were helping them out in that sense. But like you said, there's also ones that weren't that great <laughs> and not yeah, that helpful. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, to each their own, um, like I said before on the podcast, I think it was, I think, college for me was uh ideal i mean cuz i was coming mm-hmm. from long island there wasn't much going out go- going on out there and i never yeah. really stuck in the city aside from like just visiting and it just right. gave me a whole new experience and and i enjoyed it for sure yeah i feel you man i wasn't i wasn't really into like the hanging out crowd and like hitting up clubs and and bars and this and that i was just yeah kind of like a loner you know like about my business and just did what i had to do to get the fuck out of there because it yeah, was just like that, high school 2.0 it was just reckless and like obviously people were there because they had to or because their parents forced them and they didn't really want to be there so it kind of changes the experience but if i were to change anything i would probably go out of state and and, and try something new you know what i mean what other college would you think of, like, out of state that you would have gone to? I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> I just know that I would go to a different state just to experience something new, a new a new way of or a new culture or a new little, like, social uh, culture um, other than staying here in New York. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, it, I had a, a bad experience here, but I feel like yeah. I, I didn't, I couldn't, uh, I could have gotten more out of it. Right. I mean, I looked at a place in Rochester, New York, and I just wanted to go there because of their medical illustration course, but I never oh, even researched the school. I had never even looked at it. And then when I got into FIT, I just looked at it for a sec. And yeah, it was mm-hmm. not the vibe, you know, it's like in the middle of yeah. like nowhere kind of, kind of spot. And <laughs> um, yeah, no, I was, I was going to be super upstate and I was not about that, you know? And I'm so glad I stayed in the city for the, yeah. For yeah, the majority true. of my time. All right. So then um, after college, what, what was it like finding work? Um, It was hard, man. It was just like you're kind of like stuck in limbo where you like you know enough, but you don't know enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like nobody really wants to give you a shot. But, you know, like some places that some the places that would give you a shot, you're kind of like, I don't know if that's going to like make my make my brand as a person suffer. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to do like bullshit work. And I also want to like rise to the top as fast as I can. But um, at the end of the day, like there is no shortcuts. You just have to like do the bullshit work because you're going to learn a lot about what you do want to do and like what what you consider yourself as bullshit work yeah yeah but i I, I would say it was it was definitely it was definitely tough getting to um to a good place you know what i mean like you, you it's very like discouraging when you like go put out applications to like the places that you always wanted to work and they're like, no, thank you for applying, blah, blah, blah. And it's yeah. like back to back to back to back to back. And it's like, oh, my God, am I really going to have to, like, work at, like, washing dishes for a little bit? Yeah. Which yeah. I did. <laughs> Which I did because, you know, obviously you have to, like, make ends meet somehow. But it's, the per- like, the staying persistent and consistent with all your applications. And just, like, sometimes you just got to bite the bullet and do something you don't really want to do. 
because there's there's a lesson in all of that. Dude, for real, and that's like a that's a great lesson in itself because before the mm-hmm. job that we got now, I was working at this other job as just like a printer or anything, and they were great people, and they actually let me work on my own portfolio while I was at work. Oh, so, that's dope. Yeah. So like, ideally it wasn't the job I was obviously going to stay on there forever, you know, but yeah, if you could find a job just to like make those ends, the ends meet and then just be able to like make your portfolio that much better and hone yeah. in on it, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's better to do that than just like struggling for years, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah you gotta like sure. figure, figure that out. And until you find that, that job that you really enjoy, you know, I mean, like, yeah. like you, I sp- spent like, I want to say like two years applying and just getting no's back to back just, yep. just like that. And, and with, with the job that we have now, I applied to that, out of a whim i was like dude i'm done it was like during a time where i was just like yeah yo i'm done applying this stinks you know I, i'm not gonna get a job and then i saw the the, app, the application on their website and i'm like you know what let me give it give it a try um i'm just gonna put it out there and then yeah, sure like, enough like, <laughs> yeah then sure enough yeah. that's the one that hit and i'm like dude that's amazing crazy you know it's just just how it works man it's just you really yeah. cannot give give up um, one of them are gonna hit eventually you know yeah exactly and I feel like during the whole time before this job I actually shortly before I got the job I kind of like sat into like the space where I'm like the freelance space where I'm just like you know what I have enough clients where I'm like comfortable like I'm not struggling to pay the bills I'm like yeah I, I could do this you know what I mean because I don't consider myself like one of those hustlers that's like going out and, and, and looking for jobs and asking people. And like, I'm, I don't, I'm not, I don't have that in me to like, keep asking people or like, Hey, do you have some work for me? Like, kind of like, oh, can you, can you please, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like send that. me, send me some work my way. Like, yeah, I, I'm, I don't have that in me. So, um, I was kind of getting comfortable in the freelance space and then boom, a, a full time comes along and I'm like, what the fuck? This is <laughs> like, yeah so it was it was definitely it shows you you know like just keep your head down and keep grinding and just um find that one thing that you're good at and just keep working at it and working at it until like yeah. your fingers to the bone and then seriously you know, you're gonna get yours like just working hours in in and out like you know so yeah like, I want to know what kind of other jobs have you had leading up to this? Because you were saying, like, sure. you were washing dishes to, like, make ends meet. And yeah, I, man. Because, like, an, as an illustrator, I always wonder, like, what kind of jobs we hold, like, building our careers, you know? Dude, I've had all kinds of random jobs. Like, I went from, like, when I was 16, like, I was working at a cell phone shop in, like, on Hillside, like, where, where I'm in Queens, where I'm from. And, like, the most random little cell phone shop that was definitely doing some shady shit on the side. But I just like kept my head down and I was like fixing phones. Like people would come in like, Hey, my screen is cracked. Oh, I got you. And I would just go to the back, fix their screens, hook them up with like a new SIM card, whatever, like just the most random job ever. And um, I went from there to like working at Bloomingdale's like as like a, a, like just cleaning up the floor, just like people would like wear these nice fancy coats and like, oh, I don't like this, and throw them like no decency, just throw yeah. them on the rack. Retail not even put them has back. to be one of the worst jobs. Oh my man. god, I've been there. That I, that definitely made me like not like people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like, wow, yeah. you really have to be such a dick, dude. I mean, I worked at a uh, Aldo. Like that was one of my oh, first, man. one of my first jobs. And like, I worked my way up from like, you know, being a salesperson to then like a management position and okay. all the way through, it was just horrible experience, man. I mean, horrible, you get, man. you get the decent people that are super nice and right. always like coming to you to like get help. But then you got the worst ones and the people that return stuff are like drama queens. Oh, my, my favorites God. were, my favorites were when they would like buy it the, like on a Friday night. 
and then come mm-hmm. back on a Sunday and that it's all trashed up because of they, course, wore it they to the already club. went out on it. Yeah. <laughs> and then they try and return it, man, and make a whole scene, dude. And it was just, Jeez. and that was like almost every weekend. It was just those kind of, that kind of stuff like just humbles you and then just like cracks at your, at oh, your yeah. like soul, man. Absolutely. And then I think the longest, the longest one, and I learned a lot from that job. I did security for a very long time. Um, and I, I kind of like met really good people and I, I learned how to manage and deal with people the, the, the right way. So it was kind of like not your average. I mean, I did security like at the door type stuff and, you know, I kind of worked my way, my way up. Cause it's like, it's one of those jobs where it's like, if you got your wits about you and, and you are not a dick and you can treat people, you know, fairly you can go up in the ranks real quick. So that's what happened to me. I like, I started at like the very bottom, worked my way up and it was a very nice building out in um, Chelsea. So um, it was, it was a really good experience. I met a lot of really dope people and a lot of like high profile superstars and uh, you know, actors and radio personalities and all kinds of like, just all caliber of people. And, you kind of see like who who let the fame get to them and like yeah. who who kind of like is a good person. So that that gave me kind of like a, a spectrum of like, okay, like now I know how how to go about life and but because I'm not a really a person that gets starstruck like that. So um it was easy for me to just like treat them for who they are. They're still yeah. a person, they're still a human being. And um that that job definitely taught me a lot about myself but it also forced me to realize like i don't want to be doing this shit for the rest of my life so i did that for kind of like in my college career like towards like that tail end and then i was like oh shit i'm making good money off of this so i started doing that and i kind of like left college on the side and then three years in i'm like where did the time go and i'm like I need to go back to school because I hadn't finished. I didn't, I was oh, at my last year. Wow. I was on my last year in college and I was like, you know what? Fuck this. Like everything <laughs> is like, cause they, cause college, like that's the one thing that they made it a little bit hard for me to like, want to stay there. Like all the, the professors weren't like, like pretty shitty. And like, I was like, what the hell? Like I'm not catching a break. And then I find this job that's paying me well. And like, all I have to do is give them my time. And all of a sudden, I'm making some money to to bring back home. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this. Three years later, I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I don't want to be doing this for the rest of my life. Yeah. Then, I, then I started seeing, like, o- older people in in the in the job. And I'm like, damn, like, this guy's probably, like, you know, like, in his 60s, still, like, just standing at the door, making sure nobody comes in that's not supposed to. And I'm like, I kind of have, like, a self-reflection i was like damn right. i don't want to do that for the rest of my life and i like sitting on this talent let me go back to school and finish but at that time the credits and all that kind of bullshit started up to play parts so when i went back i had to like build some more credits so i ended up staying like two years more than i should have if damn. i would have just kept going like the first yeah. half and just finished i would have been straight but instead i left and came back and now I have, I added like two years and change to, to my, you know, my studies. So to your actual it was degree, like, right? Yeah. To my degree. So now, I mean, it was lesson learned and I don't mm. regret any of it, but it was definitely a stupid, uh, stupid choice on my end. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I always say that, you know, a lot of these things lead to way, where you need to go. I mean, who knows where yeah. you would have been if you had stayed, maybe you wouldn't mm-hmm. be where you are now, you know? And yeah. it's just how it goes, dude. Um, and like you yeah, said, that's why I never, I never regret it. That's why. Yeah, exactly. And like you said, it's so, it's so hard when you find a job like that where you don't necessarily like it, but the pay is great. Yeah. And then you don't realize that you're just wasting time. But right. at the same time, you know, you got to pay your bills. But it's just like, yeah. Then when you realize you're too late, too, too many years into it, you're like, do I really need? want to quit right now you know and that was like yeah. the whole thing with my last job you know they like offered me way more money just to stay and not leave and and it was just like i really had to give it a th- 
like a thought, you know, it's just like, mm -hmm. do I stay here for an, another couple of years just for an, a little bit of extra cash or actually start, start my career as something right. I want to do, you know? Yeah, exactly. I feel like it's eventually like a lot of creative, like, um, college students or just anybody getting into the field has to make that decision eventually, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna come down to like doing your passion and like paying your bills, which is yeah. so unfortunate, you know, that you have to make that choice. Sometimes it's, you know, more than just paying the bills. Sometimes it's like, you know, helping your parents out or, or, you know, saving up money for a certain, you know, rent or whatever it is. Like you have to, help out here and there so it's it's tough it's tough to make those choices because at the in the back of your mind you still have that little voice that's like you're not supposed to be doing this yeah you're, you're meant for something else but it's it's a hard choice to make and i feel like you know where you know life is is long and short at the same time but you know that that little section of my life it's like I don't regret it because it, it was needed at the time. And as long as you, you always come back to your, your main goal, it, that's the important part. Yeah. So I took, I took that away from, you know, like, yeah, I left college for, you know, some money, but at the same time, I kind of needed it at the time. But as I came back, I, I got back on the saddle and, and finished and um, I was able to like, see college in a different um, lens because I was a little older now and I can see yeah. things happening around me. When you're in college, you're, you are you know, especially if you go straight from high school, you're still a kid, you know what I mean? You're still like yeah, exactly. hyped and, and you just want to party and go out and all that stuff. So it's kind of like a, a fuzz and you're not really paying attention to like the little nuances that happen in the college and the relationships that you can build with, with a professor or, you know, with other people, your peers and stuff. So I felt like when I went back, I kind of was like watching this from a different lens and I'm like, holy shit, like this is a different experience than when I first w was there. Yeah. I mean, you got a whole life lesson for like the next couple yeah. of years before you went back, you know, and that's something yeah. that a lot of people wouldn't even have done. You know, once they left college, they, they like, they think it's too hard to go back or it's just like, they feel like they're wasting their time, you know? And, yeah. and I mean, it is, did, it is it. hard. Yeah. <laughs> It is hard because you, you're like kind of like older now and all these like these young guns are like, you know, hungry and like doing yeah. all these things that you're like, oh, shit, like I got to, you know, you can either take it as like a defeat or kind of flip that and be like, no, I'm going to outdo all of these people. Exactly. Because, you know, like I'm I'm just as good. And I, and that's the one good thing about about a creative field is you can get like big at any point of your life, you know, like, yeah. What I thought about a lot in the when I was leaving college was like I was concerned about getting a job ASAP, you know, and thinking that mm -hmm. I like I wasn't gonna make it if I didn't have a job then. But yeah. I mean, a lot of my favorite artists are have like got their careers going like in their late thirties, in their forties. Some one of them even like at, in their late fifties, you know. And Damn. that's inspiring, yeah. man. I know. And it's like, you could really start the start that your creative passion at any point in your life, as long as, yeah. you know, you take that risk and, and actually hone in on that. And that's right. the beauty of this, this career path, you know? And I feel like a lot of people need to know that. Cause I mean, going out of college, a lot of my friends thought the same thing. It was just like, they thought that they weren't going to make it if they didn't have a job right then and there, you know? Yeah. But, um, I think just a lot of more people need to to hear that from from people in in it right now, you know. Yeah, exactly. And it's like there's there's really no rush, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like once you once you graduate, it's like it's gonna be. You have to have the understanding, like yeah, it's gonna. You're not gonna get it spoon fed to you. You still have to like. Now you've learned, and now you have to like put on all the work that you know, and kind of like. I feel like in college, you still, you know, some people are blessed and they find themselves like that. And then some people like, okay, now what do I do with these tools? Yeah. And have a, a hard time kind of like applying and, and, and learning what to do with them and, and, or what works best for themselves or like where they want to be in the space of a creative, 
which is what happened to me. Like I, I graduated and I was like, okay, cool. Like I got this degree. What do I do now? Like, where do I apply to, or what do I really want to do? Do I want to be a, a designer or do I want to be like, like doing graphics or an illustrator or doing branding and logos or there's so many different like categories yeah that you're like okay what do i do now like what do i like and it's just like do it all <laughs> yeah do it all until you find what you what you like and stick to it once you find it's like oh shit like people start complimenting you like yo this is really good work uh this and that you know like kind of like tune in and be like oh, okay let me give this section uh, like let me give this little piece a little bit more love and and do it even more and see what happens and if you ended up if you end up hating it, fucking change lanes and do something else. Yeah, and that's the beauty of it all, you know. Especially yeah. like like with the career paths that we chose, you know, there's like you said, there's so many avenues that you can actually get into and, so and many. like and like get great work out of. Um Yeah. I feel like a lot what a lot of people do though, like I've had professors where it was just like they ask you to like pick a lane. Like without mm-hmm. having like without trying anything else you know and i right. think that's where you, you're going to hinder yourself if you're not trying everything like early on then you're not really going to find what you're really good at you know maybe that one no, thing you you've to been try doing it all. For, yeah like that one thing you've been doing for years sure you're good at it but maybe there's something else that you could be even better at you know right and exactly or two things that you can do simultaneously or yeah. combine like there's so there's like you can create your own lane you know after you feel like you've kind of mastered the one and you feel like you can connect another one with it and make your own shit you know what i mean yeah exactly and then yeah combine all them together into your own into yeah like you said into your own set like brand kind of thing you know like yeah you can combine illustration with with photography and as well as with videography like put that all together and create something fucking great you know yeah absolutely and then people start noticing that and like they'll come to you because they want that look where they want yeah that, that one unique that, thing that you could bring out right exactly so what what was was there a time where you realized you can make like a career as an artist did you have that definitive moment where you got that gig and you were like yo i can make a career out of this um I don't know. I mean, I think in college I started doing like branding. I don't remember like a specific moment, but like I remember somebody reached out for me and was like, hey, can you do a logo for my company or something like that? And I'm like, hell yeah. If it has money behind it, I can do yeah. anything. <laughs> like, so that was kind of like the moment where I was like, oh, like I can get money from like something that I just practiced in school you know what I mean like that we would just do projects just because like that was a, that was something that was like like a wake-up moment like oh shit I'm kind of like good at this so let me let me keep trying and then word of mouth you know you can get more more gigs like that so I think um I started you know looking on the line to like see if I can find like little like fiber for example i think it's called fiber or something like that yeah you can just find a find a little you know logo or something that you know people don't really know what to do or what direction to take and do some you know logos and branding on your own send it to them and get paid for it so that that was kind of like my first initial like dipping my toe in the water of just like doing branding for for people or for companies that's awesome, man. I mean, yeah. I think the one, like, yeah, the one I always go back to is just the poster for my senior show. That was the one that uh, got the most love, oh. and, and that really like senior show was fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, what was yours like? Man, I had all kinds of random shit in my portfolio. Like, I did like a, a brand or like a comer, like kind of like some commercial stuff for um jack daniels i like kind of like redid uh like their i don't know i kind of like reimagined like their ads or something right so what went from 
reimagining the ads to like where would they live you know what i mean like a like a bus stop or like a train ad or um you know even like on a taxi or like full wraps on a bus or you know so kind of like that's where my mind was at like okay i make this piece and like where is it going to live or where is it going to get exposure or like thinking about um the demographic that you know people who are drinking this like yeah. where would they where would they be at you know like where do they hang out or are they in transit or like you know you catch them on the ride home so that's kind of like one piece and then i had um a rebranding of like um of a park upstate so it was like i did like signage and um kind of like a, a website that like wireframes and all kinds of just random stuff dude i don't know what the hell i was thinking and i was just like this is what i got yeah yeah i hope, yeah. You, I hope you like it <laughs> so and you know i had a lot of professors that i would talk to on the side and and just get their uh their ideas and a lot of them were like yeah this is dope like i can see this being out like as an official ad or yeah you know if it wasn't it was kind of off then it would be like yeah this is too crazy i don't think this works so it was senior show was it was weird all right so it wasn't like the greatest experience for you yeah it was yeah i mean it was i don't know it was just for me it was weird because it wasn't like a like a i don't know i didn't feel like like what it was supposed to be like it was just like a room with all these professors sitting down at tables and you just kind of bring them up your portfolio like right. oh, this is what i did Oh, and they kind of like look through it and like fucking either chop it down to like nothingness or like give you props. So it wasn't like a gallery way. kind of situation? Nah, not for me oh. at least. Okay. So well, yeah. with illustration, um at least at FIT they had they have their own gallery like in the lower level. And so okay. for the senior show they'll have like a gallery space in the school where they put out the best work of that that year and like it's like a whole process you got to submit to them like a month before and then they get like a oh, like a board of like uh professors to like check all the work out and see which one's gonna yeah. go where and all that and then they pick winners and um and then like i think the last the, the year that i was in we, they got mm -hmm. sponsored by Wh wackham and um oh shit yeah, yeah, and then they, it was That's like the dope. first, the first, uh, first and second and third place got like different kinds of like tablets, and then I got the because of the poster I made, I got first place, and they gave me a Cintiq, and I've been using that what? shit this whole time. Yeah. Oh my so, god! And you still have it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for That's years, fine. like years since I had it, I wasn't using it as often, but because I had yeah. my iPad, so with Procreate, okay. you know, I've been working just yeah. on that. It's like the best kind of thing to do right now but um i've been getting mm -hmm. more into photoshop again and like drawing on there and uh yeah and that's yeah i've been using it more now than i did when i actually got it a few years back <laughs> yeah yeah it's a learning curve to, to get to use those things those tools yeah yeah, it's like, yeah i mean I don't it's really like know this thir it size is. it's like a 13 inch screen but my yeah. my actual monitor looks better, so I'll just use it like a regular oh. tablet at at some points. Gotcha. Just because it, it's just more natural for me, weirdly mm -hmm. enough. <laughs> but um, so you get out of college, and then I mean, you've had these crazy clients that a lot of people dream of having. Like you've worked with Amazon, you've worked with Puma, Nike, and Adidas. What was that like getting connected with them, and like? if you got connected with any other clients or like galleries? So I started, I got this job, you know, fast forward from college or whatever. I had like all these little random things that I did. Worked for a print shop. Um, after that, I worked for um, Jeff Staple at Staple. I interned there for a little bit. Oh, snap, I how dude. That, yeah, I don't know how that <laughs> happened. It was just like, I, I saw something on Instagram that, oh, we were looking for interns and, I'm like, I'll do it. Like I, I sent my, my resume, the whole nine. <clears throat> I started um, communications via like email and stuff with uh, their creative uh, head or director or something like that. 
there and um i would go there once a week because i was still working at the print shop and i got this so the print shop guy was like dope he was a, a dope human being and he would just like i told him like hey i'm i'm gonna be working here but like one day a week if i could just please go to this internship and and you know there's something there for me like i gotta keep keep at it so he was like yeah no problem whatever and eventually um I didn't, I, I was in the internship and I was doing all kinds of random stuff and shooting for them. And like, I was still learning like kind of like my photography style at the time. So I did that for a little bit and um, I, I was still applying for other places. And all of a sudden I get a job for um, a designer at um, Jimmy Jazz. And um, are you familiar with Jimmy Jazz? Jimmy Jazz, I got to look him up. Let me double check. It's like that. a... Um, it's like a third party, kind of like a Foot Locker type of thing. Um, okay. But they're like in the hood. And oh, I, I see that. Instantly, I, see that now, yeah. I instantly knew that brand. And I was like, hell yeah, because they work with all these other brands. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. But they were located in Jersey. So I was literally, I, I quit the, um, the print shop because obviously I'm going to go for other a design job that has like a, a bigger name so I'm like I, I jump ship and I start working in Jersey and I'm working as a designer for e-com for them and I expressed some interest like they saw my portfolio and they were like hey you do a lot of shooting too so we want to get you on to like you know doing studio stuff and like doing some lifestyle stuff and I'm like hell yeah I'll do anything and everything like this <laughs> yeah. was like my first introduction to like streetwear and um i did anything that i could get my hands on and um they had a senior photographer there and i would like pick his brain all the time and um kind of like learn the ropes from him and 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 see what i can like absorb you know what i mean like i wanted to do i wanted to do it all so from doing e-commerce i hopped over to the marketing team where where they were um they were kind of more in charge of like the lifestyle shoots so they would give me a pair of shoes or two or three shoes and it was my job to get like a model or even if it was no model just shoot these shoes like how you would see them in in the street you know what I mean so I would take these shoes on the weekend and like go to all my favorite spots and like I started thinking more about like um, textures and like recognizable textures like uh, cement and and like this old wood and like people would know where where this is um yeah. just from the environment so i started shooting a lot of uh um just stuff like shoes in in harlem and just take some shoes to brooklyn and and find these interesting kind of like backgrounds and environments that i can shoot these shoes at and bring them back on monday and and have like a a, a whole uh a roll of just random shots and a lot of those shots ended up going on like um, banners for the website and um, uh, their Instagram and social media and all that kind of stuff. So it was a uh, it was it was dope doing that. And then in the colder months, I would do a lot of like in studio stuff. So that's when I would talk to the to the senior um, photographer, pick his brain about lighting and like uh, how to get certain looks and how to use like um, props properly and do all kinds of stuff. So that's when my studio stuff started getting real good. And he ended up giving me um, my own little corner where I can kind of like set up these, these little scenes and stuff with, uh, with the shoes and all that kind of stuff. So I would, you know, he would teach me the basics or I would ask him like, Hey, how do I get this look? i um, getting like this weird shadow or this weird light shining off of the shoe. So then I would learn about like the textures of shoes and how they reflect light and yeah. all kinds of just like, just absorbing everything and just by experience and just doing it, you know what I mean? So, um, from that, uh, a lot of, I started getting a lot of like, um, views on, on Instagram and, like people would be like hey can you shoot this for me like hey can you come here and shoot this for me or can i send you something and you shoot it for me so that's when i started working with other brands and and um doing that kind of uh uh like my whole career kind of like shifted from doing design like i would still do design but it was more photo heavy 
Yeah. And um, a lot of the stuff that I was doing was like on social medias and and um, um, shit like that. So I think um, that's when it that's after that, I started like really getting heavily into um, like product photography, which I would never have graduating college. I would never think in a million years that I would be shooting products like. Yeah. And and it, it kind of like kind of even went up even further up when the pandemic hit because then it was easier for a brand to hit me up on, on DM and it's like, Hey, can I send you this product? Like, let's, uh, let's talk about, you know, this, this and that and how we want it done and we'll send you the product and you shoot it, you know, how you want. So then I, I invested in my own, you know, lighting equipment and this and that, and I would shoot it in the crib. Like I would buy my, my own seamlesses and according to, you know, what the client wanted and I would just do it at home which was even easier because I was like, I don't have to be outside or anything. Like yeah. I just do it from home. Um, but that, that was definitely what kind of kicked it off. That job was what I learned a lot from and I took a lot from and And the people there were, were amazing. I met a lot of people that I can consider like really good friends. And um, anytime I had an issue of like, I, I need work or something like that, they would always look out for me. It's like, Hey, I got I got this one guy I'm going to connect you with, um, you know, do right by him. And that's it. Just like not being an asshole. Just like, yeah, just replying to this. Hey, yeah, of course I can do whatever it is that you need me to do. Like, we'll figure it out. So that's kind of like what uh, a lesson that I, I learned along the way. is just like, don't be an asshole. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, especially don't... in the end yeah, in a career like this, man, where it's just yeah. mostly freelance stuff that you're going to get us unless you get that full-time gig. Yeah. They're good. Your reputation, your reputation means so much more. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's currency in this, in this career path for sure. Yeah. It's like your, your reputation as a human being, it's like, it counts. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, you, you don't, you don't have to uh, put someone else down in order to eat. You know what I mean? Like you can, if someone is, competing for the same kind of gig you have to kind of show out why why it is that they should pick you yeah and exactly then, and that's what i did i never like fought anybody over a job or got pissed off because they want a, a job like it's fine you know what i mean like just let it go and, and get better you know what i mean it's like what are they doing that i'm not doing let me try to not copy but like let me one-up them and see if 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 it hits that's awesome, man. So like I said before, you've had dream clients for a lot of people. So aside from yeah. the ones you've worked <laughs> with already, is there any other company you'd, you'd like to work with? Um, Not really. I mean, there's people that I want to work with. Like I, there's uh, just like I, I like to to think about working with athlete, athletes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like um, especially in the in the fight scene. Um, I would love to work with like a Tyson, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know at what capacity, but just like, there's people like on the list. I'm like, I would like to work with that person just to do something like for their brand or something that they have an idea for that we can brainstorm and, and come up with something. Um, but you know, there's a lot of brands that I, that I love and admire like Kith. They, they're yeah. bought, they're, they're, um, product photography is like my goodness like every time i look at something it's like yeah of course i want to spend 400 something dollars on it because it looks so good <laughs> yeah you know what i mean so like that's the kind of stuff that i look at now and i'm like damn like how did this company or this person that's behind the camera like make this look so clean and like it just makes you like admire like the details of, of the item you know what i mean yeah so there's there's kith there's like um who else there's like only new york does really dope stuff they're kind of like streetwear um belief is another one they're kind of like small like small brands but like they're they're big in my eyes because like i, I love what they're doing you know what yeah I mean? because of their branding and such right right exactly yeah so um yeah, there's a lot of brands that I admire just because they have such clean work and they don't try to overdo it. They don't try to like shove it in your face or, you know, it's just literally about the product and and it, it's up to the consumer to take it as you will, you know? Yeah. So 
then when it comes to like then client work, how do you work out a price? Like when you first started out, did you think that like you were underpricing yourself a lot or? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But I also like, I, I kind of did it with my experience. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Like I felt like, it's probably not the right way, but like, who knows the right way? Like I was basing my price off my experience and like, I was like, Oh, I'm not really good at this one thing. So let me not try to like beat them over the head. Well, they'll be like, no, you're not even that good. You know? So yeah, I kind of yeah. like was like self-reflecting, like, uh, if I don't know how to do something, I'm not going to charge them crazy. Like I'll charge them a decent price because, you know, obviously I'm still doing the work, but there's, there's like a fine line of like you went too far and then like you're undercutting yourself. So um, for me, it was just like experience based. And like now that I do, I have more product photography under my belt. Like I can kind of like up the price a little bit um, just cause I've had so much of it and I can shoot several different kinds of products. Um, so I would do that. And design was the same thing, you know, like, there's always those people that I give like homie discounts because they always come back. And yeah. They're always like, you know, like, especially when you're like down and out and like you randomly get hit up by a friend like, hey, I need you to design, you know, this for this t shirt or something like that. And I'm like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> like, I got you. Um, so it's just kind of like a, it's like a living, breathing thing. I don't have like a standard, like, this is what I do for everybody. Yeah. It depends I mean, like, on what yeah, that's what just the freelancing is. too. Yeah, yeah, like you're gonna give a different price, obviously, too, if you're gonna be working with a like a big name brand, and then someone mm-hmm. who's independent. You know, there's a budget yeah. for everyone, and yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's I've, something that I've been I've been like kind of asking more of, like what uh, like what's your budget you know, yeah. depending on the client, like obviously like these big wigs, like they have the budget and they don't want to let it go. And, um, you know, obviously you can kind of go back and forth, but like, you know, a small brand or, or someone that's kind of like a friend of a friend, you kind of like kind of gauge of what they're asking of you. If they're asking, Hey, we need a, a logo and then we need this and we need that and we need, all right. So I'm going to charge you per item what yeah. it is or what I think is fair. Um, and then there's those that you're kind of like biting a bullet or, or taking, taking a hit for, but you know, that it's in good faith. You're kind of like, I'm going to do you a solid in the front end, but you know, you're going to help me kind of progress and give me more work in the future, which I happen to, I, I did that a lot during the pandemic where it's just like, I'm going to do a solid so that I can get more work eventually. Cause you right. know, obviously if you're a good person and you give them a fair price they'll they'll most likely come back you know yeah it's good to know i mean like my favorite well not my favorite but like the most common thing I've, i get into is like the whole what's your budget what's your quote like they yeah <laughs> like you're just in a standstill in between you and your client like they're yeah. not trying to tell you their budget so that they can see how much you would undercut yourself kind of thing you know right yeah, they so, want to see if you if you shoot yourself in the foot. In, like, exactly, the exactly. Price. And that's that's the worst part. But it's just like you got to stand yeah. your ground a little and, and uh, yeah. let them let no, them say too. their price. Yeah, right. That's important too. You got to stand your ground. If like you know that you're the shit at something, you give them that price, and like, hey, it is what it is. Like this is my yeah. price, and this is what it's going to cost for me to to do what you want me to do. And you stand by it, you know, obviously, if they come back with like, you know, something ridiculous, then hey, it was never meant to be. Exactly. Yeah. But, but you got to definitely if if you've been practicing this thing, like, you're, you've been doing illustrations, so I'm, I'm sure they're gonna ask you like, hey, can you do this for me? Can you do this kind of poster, whatever? It's like, no, I'm the shit at this. And, and I'm gonna give you my price. Exactly. So, yeah. And either I mean... you take it or you leave it. Yeah, and that's where I'm at right now. I mean, in the beginning I was, and I was like trying to get everything I could. But now, mm-hmm. you know, when you have like a, you already have your sec, like full time gig and everything, you're not really worried about like making right. that side money at the moment. So you give them the price. Yeah. If they say no, then all right, whatever. But, um, hey, it is what it is, man. It's like, it, especially if you have something stable, it's like you're not afraid of losing money. 
exactly that's yeah a lot of a lot of brands are kind of afraid of it's like oh man like this guy is is really like relentless and then if yeah and exactly. then if they agree if they agree with your price then you got a good then then like, you're out pay, here. Payday. <laughs> yeah you got a good payday <laughs> yeah exactly hey I've, so, I've there's been there's been clients where i just like i send my budget and i'm like oh i don't know yeah, if that yeah. was a good idea but like fuck it it yeah, what it is, and like I just wait, wait for that email approved. I'm like, Whoo, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, that what about those one. other ones where it's like you send that budget, you send everything, like you do all that work, and then they ghost you. You ever get those? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There's so many, so many that'll just be like, oh, I think it's not in our budget to to you know whatever we were thinking. Like if they give you a a, a competing price, then yeah then it's like, okay, we can work from there. But if they just kind of ghost you, first of all, that's disrespectful. Like, yeah. fuck those people. Like, <laughs> I hate that. Yeah, yeah, no, and, I get a bunch of that, man. It's the worst. Yeah, man, it's the worst. It's like, sometimes it's like, why do you even hit me up? Exactly, like, yeah. What? Like, come come prepared, come, come prepared to bargain. You know what I mean? It's just like everything else. It's like, you wouldn't go to the supermarket and, and ask, you know, for a discount on apples, like, an apple is an apple. Like you know the price for that shit. Yeah. You stop playing with me. So, it's the same. It's the same concept. It's like if you're not prepared to go back and forth with with someone for their work. Like mind you, this is like what they do for a living. Then you're not you're not serious about your business. You know. So, that's that's kind of how I flip it. It's like if you come to me and like we you don't have like it's too much for for what they they want to pay yeah it's like okay tell me what you want to pay so that we can start somewhere first of all so i can see where your head is at and if it's like super disrespectful then i i I tell them like hey it seems like you're not very serious about your brand because i'm serious about what i do you know what i mean so if you're not serious about your brand then you can't approach somebody and expect like respect from them you know what i mean so yeah it's like nope i'm not dealing with it yeah yeah and the, i wish more people knew that like or at least clients knew that but um i think it's changing yeah i think it's it's changing a lot of people have more respect for creatives nowadays i hope so i mean yeah it's just the worst I mean, part you can, like the you can worst tell. part of it is just that like when you spend that time in getting like to that point where like oh you're ready to go like you're already a yeah. couple of emails in and then they do it then it's just like all that oh wasted time goes nowhere wasted you know time. It's um, so frustrating, but it it will happen. It yeah, will, yeah, it no, will it will happen. It will happen with the brands that you don't expect it. You know, like the the, the brands that are like kind of like well established, and you know, sometimes it doesn't matter, but like you can see it more. And like like brands that are like well established, and and they don't have any kind of remorse for 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 artists and like what they do, because it's like at the end of the day, I'm creating something from scratch for you, like have some respect you know what i mean it's like you you can't you can't expect people to like respect your brand and i would i would be the first one that you know someone tells me like hey this brand hit me up don't do it yeah i mean my experience was this this and that they might do it to you unless you're okay with that then by all means go ahead but me like it took a long time to build that self-respect as a as a creative which is like every creative has that kind of issue of like what uh am i doing too much is it is it like not enough or you know yeah like imposter like syndrome. Inner thoughts yeah exactly so it's like you have to get to a point where you feel comfortable um demanding stuff you know on your on your end you know what i mean and respecting what you do because there's no way that you've worked all this time and put all this energy into this and you're just gonna let a brand kind of bully you around to like what price they feel comfortable with yeah one thing is is a negotiation and then the other thing is disrespect so yeah you have to you have to call them out and if you're not going to respect your own work then you can't really expect much respect from anybody else exactly exactly you have to have overall you have to have more respect for yourself and and kind of like yeah i'm going to lose money but like you walk away with your dignity at least exactly so when it comes to like starting a new project, like what's your workflow like on, in that sense? Uh, we could, I guess we can get into then graphic design and then 
and then photography? Like, what's the workflow on that? All right. I mean, my workflow is kind of the same, give or take a couple of different factors. But I always, and I got that from from college, I always ask for a brief. Like, I want to know, even if it's a conversation over the phone or an email, like, I want to know your brand. I want to know about, like, where your brand has come from or, like, the, the work that you've put in. Um, what your brand is about. Um, I want to know, and this is like, besides like what you want me to contribute, I want to know what, what the brand is already doing and like what the idea is. And like, I want it all on paper so I can, you know, come back to it. Even while I'm shooting or while I'm designing, like, I'll go back to that, that brief so I can like keep track of like, let me not um, steer too far off of like their, their brand, um, you know, statement or their, their goal or their, or their story. You know what I mean? Like I read, I read about their story or I listen to the conversations and I I hear I'm listening for like the passion behind it and like what, what's like the, the end all be all for this brand or company. So for me, I need that for sure, because I I need to know what I'm getting into, you know, like, and I need to see if it aligns with, you know, me as a person. Um, and like what I like to do, because I'm not, I, I'm also like big on like, I don't want to take projects that like, I'm not, I don't, I don't have that passion. Like, I want to share your passion. If you're excited about something and you approach me like, hey, I have this brand, I have this idea, I want to do this, this and that. And I can feel that excitement. Like I feed off of that and I can put yeah. that, translate that into the work that I'm doing. But if you come like, hey, I have, you know, I don't know, do whatever you want. Like, this is, like I don't want to hear that. I want you, I want you to give me exactly what like the energy that you want me to put into it, which a lot of the time they will. So I need like a, a project brief and I need like a list of the de- deliverables. That's how I start any project. I need the brief and I need like a, a some kind of like list of deliverables so that there's no confusion of like I missed out or I did a mistake or, you know, whatever you didn't tell me about this yeah. or you didn't tell me what it was used for. So those are the, the, the prime things that I need to begin a project and then everything else is on me. Like if I need to shoot something at home, like I, I set up my, my, I have my, my schedule, my time of when I'm going to do this. Um, when I feel like mentally I'm there for this project, um, I give them realistic timelines or that's another one too. I want to see like what, what the timeline is for this project or whatever it is. Um, and if it's realistic or not. Yeah. So if you, if you send me a project, you get it mailed to me and not thinking about like mail time and like how long after that will I be ready for this project? You know what I mean? So I'll, I'll get into those specifics, but um, mainly like it's about like mental space. If I'm like mentally prepared, okay, I have this product. I need to get it done by the 15th or whatever. And I need to like see where I'm at and, and, and get it done and, you know, set up my, my shop or my studio, or, you know, I need to go to this location. I got to check the weather and see if it's all good. So, um, that kind of is like the beginning half of, um, of my workflow. And then once I'm in it, I just get lost in the sauce, you know, like that, that's my favorite part. So, um, once I start, you know, shooting or designing and, Sometimes I'll, I'll finish even before your timeline and I'll, I like to do that so that I give enough time to, for the back and forths of like, Oh, I don't like this. I don't like, cause there's always going to be back. And oh forth. yeah. There's for like sure, very, man. very rare. You'll get a client. They'll be like, Hey, okay. That's the one. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like you get the version two, version three, version 16, version 37. As long it's as like, you're charging oh them God. for all those versions, then you're yeah, fine. That's true. too. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't that's... just sit there and keep get, giving out free yeah, work. Yeah. 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 I think like yeah, with me, exactly. it's like you get three revisions. After that, you're paying for whatever yeah. more you change. Because then, if you just give them unlimited changes, then they're just gonna oh my badger God. you until forever. You know, at least with That's like you, when they know you just that hammered yourself with that. Yeah, when they know that they're gonna get charged for another change, they'll be, they'll be yeah. happy with whatever they that third one yeah. is. You know. <laughs> Oh, well, they'll be more direct with what they exactly. Want, you know what exactly. I mean? They'll be like, oh, I don't know, maybe we can change this. It's like no this maybe we can change is going to cost you about this, this and that. Exactly. And then that's when so, they're really like, okay, never mind. This is good. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. Like, oh, you know what? I actually like the first version. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that's, that's important too. 
All right, yeah. So, so make sure you're getting paid for your time. So with you, it's just like a lot of preparation in the beginning before any of the work gets done. And then, I mean, that's a, yeah. a lot of it too, you know, like as a freelancer, yeah. you're 90% business and then like 10% is the actual time in working on the art, you know? Yeah, man. Absolutely. It's like, once you, once you get all the things that you need to like get this project going, then it's like, like downhill, like you already, you already got everything. It's like, smooth yeah, you got everything you need. Exactly. Like you just do what you do. You know what I mean? Just get lost in it. And, and obviously like sometimes I get so lost where I have to like refer back. So that's why I ha- I like to have paper trails of like, yeah. what's going on. So I don't get, cause you know, creators, we can just go deep. Exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's like, Oh, this guy didn't even ask for all of this. Like, you know what I mean? So I always have to have like a reference point of like where I'm at and like, okay, okay. Now I remember this is the, this is what they want and this is what they spoke about. Okay. Let me continue what I'm doing and not get too far into it. Yeah. Another tip that I've, I've learned from, I think, I think it was one of my professors in college was like, when they tell you how long it's going to take you always, and then just think of it of the exact amount that it will take you and then just add another week. Cause in yeah. that way you have that grace period, like you said, where you, you give time for them to like adjust things or just yep. have an extra week where you, you could like put it to the side for a couple of days and then get back to yeah. it. Cause then that way you could actually see if there's any issues with it with fresh eyes. Yeah, know? man. That's important too. Sometimes you need to step away from it and just come back. And that's what I was talking about. Like mental space. Like I, sometimes for projects, they, they take a lot of, out of a lot out of you. Yeah. So you have to like, you know, do, do what you do and then kind of like put it down or sometimes it's not hitting how you want. You have to like put it down, go take a walk, live life a little bit for a day or two, come back. And then you're like, what the fuck is this? Like, what was I doing? Yeah. And then you got to redo it, start from scratch. Or sometimes it's like, oh, this is like, I see the direction that my brain was working. Let me kind of like build off of that and continue. Um, But most of the, yeah, you definitely have to factor in some time for yourself to kind of like, step back from a project or kind of look or or even like you know ping pong it off some of your boys that are you know in in the space as well as like or sometimes people that are, aren't in the space at all so that they can give you kind of like a raw uh um uh like a raw feedback of like exactly either like they either they get honest, it off that yeah like honest right yeah feedback exactly either they get it off off rip and that's like good or if you of what you're doing is trying to like make them think about something, then, you know, that's good too. Or sometimes it's like, I don't understand this at all. Then you got to go back to the drawing board and figure out how to translate that or, or make it easier, simplify it or whatever it is. Yeah. There's, I think with my street photography, like that's the one I always laugh at. It's just, I haven't really figured out my, my style in like color grading or anything. So there'll yeah. be moments where like I'll color grade a whole set, leave it for a day, and then come yeah. back and I'll be like, dude, what the fuck Yo, is this? I've had so many of those. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like so you, many of that. You over edit and like you put way too much into it, and then you're just yep. like, dude, it just needs like that little slight adjustment. Nothing exactly. too crazy. But in your head, you're like, Yo, this is gonna be fucking heat. There's, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, exactly. There's oh, man, where so, I'm just like, yeah. I'll give I'll give even I'll give it to a client and everything. And then like months later, I'll come back and I'm like, what the fuck? Did I really <laughs> do this? Like, and I sent it to them like yeah, that. Yeah. Oh my God. I mean, but listen, if they liked it, it, they liked it. it yeah. I mean, if it was bad, <laughs> yeah. they would have told you, but like, I mean, with us, we're always growing. So then we just see like yeah. our old work and we're just like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a hundred percent. Dude, I'm still on this one. I mean, there's a bunch of work I never released because like, I, I do the work and then I'm just like not happy with it and I just like yeah. shelve it. But there's this like, one oh, poster. Man, I'm like, I'm not that, good with this. Yeah, like there's this one poster I've been working on for months that I just like I'll get into it for like ten minutes. I'm like, no, 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 we're done. I don't want to touch this. <laughs> but, um, still going through it, but eventually it'll yeah. be out. But um, yeah, it's just one of those things, man. You yeah, know? it's part of the process, man. Especially if you if you're like emotionally tied to it you just want it to be right and then like for us a lot of the times it's like you feel it you feel when it's right yeah and it's like sometimes it's not like it doesn't have not it doesn't, that you don't get that spark that you yeah you don't get that right spark yeah, yeah yeah 
Cause like I've, I've had, definitely had gigs like that. Yeah. I've had those pieces where I'm just like, I'll get lost in it for hours and like lose mm-hmm. track of time. And there's other ones where you like, you're working on it and you're looking at the clock, like, all right, so yeah. I finish this now. And I'm like, let me go do something yeah. else, you know? Um, exactly. But yeah, like those moments where you're like, just in it, like you, you're in that mode. It's just like, you're trying to, hold hold that for every piece but sometimes it just doesn't right. come you know sometimes you just gotta pay yeah. those bills and get yeah, the crappy it's... uh jobs <laughs> yeah you gotta do the crappy jobs man yeah They're important man. too <laughs> so what's something that surprised you about becoming a photographer and the graphic designer like what surprised you of the industry um hmm i think I think the interactions with people surprise me the most because it's like, it's so few and far between. It's like you get this spectrum of like people that are just assholes about for no, like for no reason, like you don't have to be like this. And then there's people that are so nice and you're like, you don't have to be this nice either. You know what I mean? (laughs) So it's, it's like, Oh man, like just just learning how to deal with different personalities in the industry is just like, Sometimes you'll get the people that are very direct and like, this is what I want, like robotic, just bang, bang, bang. Like that's, don't do anything more. Don't do anything less. Like, this is what I want. And then some people are just like aloof and they just like, I don't know, just put some creative sauce on it and do whatever you, it is that you feel like, what? That doesn't fucking help. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. not, that. you're thinking that you're giving me like this, this, like you're breaking the shackles and i'm free to do whatever like sometimes that fucking sucks because now i'm like what do i do yeah you don't know where to begin shit out of my ass like i don't i don't know what to do like just give me some kind of direction that we can like kind of bounce back and then you get those people that give you a loose direction and then once you give them something back they're like this isn't what i wanted Mm. and i'm like cool give me exactly what you need because now now we're now we're in like this little battle of like what is it that you want and like are you wasting my time right right but um yeah it's it's just like the i thought it was just you know most i thought it was going to be mostly people just like knowing what they want and kind of just giving me a list of things to do but most of the time it's not you know yeah yeah and it's it's up to you to kind of like pull it out of them so it's kind of like like you're doing kind of like a like public relations type of thing where you're just like pulling information as much as you can so that you can do your job properly yeah you'd so, think it would be easy in that sense yeah. you know and like so some, some people some some people it's hard for them to like you know go back and forth with a client and talk to them about what exactly do they want you know like not it, it has kind of like a little touch of like um you have to be a little social you know what yeah. I mean? you have to be able to have like a a good conversation or be able to carry a conversation and not just be like straight robotic. Cause like that doesn't help either. Um, having a, a, a good conversation with somebody kind of like helps you gauge like what, what it is that they want um, from, from you as an artist. So with me, what surprised me a lot about the industry that I'm in, is just like the whole aspect of, how heavy the business side of it is, you know, like you got to be your own accountant, you got to be your own manager, you got to do the marketing and everything. And when you were in college, was that anything like, did you get any like schooling on that or anything? Or did you just kind of have to learn that on your own? Yeah, maybe like a taste of it. They don't really go into that kind of, which they should. Yeah. And and that's what, what's my big gripe about college is like sure they're teaching you the foundations or or anything but with yeah with my school i was i had one semester my last year of school teaching me like the business side of illustration which should be like uh, all four years you should at least have one class teaching you something new because it's so big you know like it's like you gotta learn ta- taxes. You gotta learn how to do your own taxes. Yo, Save the receipts. That's a big like, thing, dude. Yeah. It's just like, how are you expected to like function as an illustrator without knowing right. any of these things? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because it's like it's so important. Because like, if you, you know, learning how to send an invoice or like how to make an invoice that makes sense and 
<clears throat> using that for your taxes and like what kind of equipment you can write off and like none of that stuff like i didn't know i can write off like my laptop that i use for work like what yeah yeah i didn't know that you know and nobody taught me that either i had to you know hear it from a friend or something so uh, a lot of that is so important especially if you're you know doing it on your own if you like the the freelance route and can hustle and do it you know god bless you but that part is 100 percent needs to be taught Hell yeah. I mean, there's, there's this other one that was crazy to me when I found out was like <clears throat> your desk at home. If you're using that for work, you could write off like the square footage of, of the size of your office and you can that's write so that crazy. off of your, like your, your property <clears throat> bill or whatever. And that's so crazy. That'll be like discounted off of your, your taxes, which is insane. Like that would I be very helpful. Knows that. Yeah. Like yeah. barely anybody knows that. And you could definitely do that, you know? Oh yeah. man, and, and then with illustration, you know, you could even write off like figures that you get. Like I've started recently getting into like collecting um, like Hot Toys figures, which are like the one six scale of like different actors or any anyone from like characters from movies. You yeah. could technically, I could technically write that off if I'm using wow. that for pieces. You know, like for actual like drawings that I'm doing that I'm selling. You know, and yeah, yeah, these yeah. are things that people should know. You know. You, like, 100%. things that you think would mean nothing in the grand scheme of things of, like, your career will mean everything when it comes to, like, yeah. tax season, so. Yeah, when you got to pay back, uh, you know, like, those gigs that you're you're making, like, you know, thousand more, like. Yeah. They, they creep up. <laughs> yeah, and then they come back, back with you with, like, those contractor um, W-2s or whatever, the. Oh yeah, whatever those things are, and then you got to pay mm-hmm. the taxes that you like ten ninety nines and all that. Yeah, and like a lot of them, they just give you straight like money, like on the check. They don't account for like taxes. You have to account for that, you know. And right, that's right. something that sh- should be taught, you know, because absolutely you when you start out, you think you, all that money is yours, but nah, Uncle right. Sam is gonna Uncle Sam is gonna come and yoink that shit right out of your pocket. <laughs> exactly. Like, uh, excuse me, we heard you made uh, <laughs> such and such. I think there's a little uh, percentage there for me. Exactly, and uh, <laughs> New York ain't that great with, with taxes. So. Oh my God, forget it. So, let's get into then, like, the grand scheme of things of, like, what your future is, what you want your future to be like. So what is like success to you? Um, I mean, that's a heavy question, but it is, but I always like asking <laughs> uh, it because guess... of this reason. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess success for me is like, just like your happiness. Most of all, you know what I mean? It's like, I know that's kind of cliche, but it's really, it comes down to like, are you happy doing what you're doing? Like, are you getting the clients that you respect and they respect you in return? And, um, and you're doing, you're creating things that you feel make a difference. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's a logo, but you know, at the same time you're making this business, uh, valid, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're taking your skills and you're honing it in and and you're listening to what they want or what their, their purpose is. And you're kind of like bottling that up and like transferring it into like, you know, your gig or your, your job, your logo, your branding or whatever it is. Um, so as long as I feel like you're happy with the people that you're working with uh, on a consistent basis, um, you're successful. You know what I mean? Like money is going to come and go regardless. And I've learned that the hard way, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I've had my account go to zero and then it, it shot up, you know, with a couple gigs, but, you know, that's always like a living, breathing animal that's always going to fluctuate and it's going to, um, it, it shouldn't determine, uh, success, you know, success should be, um, the, it should be deeper than, than just the, the monetizing of, of your, of your hobby. It should be, um, are you happy with what you're creating on a daily basis? If not, then you're not, you're not doing it right. You're right. You know, obviously you got to eat a lot of shit first but you know always come back to (laughs) always come back to the humble beginning that make you happy exactly always come back to the things that make you happy and 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 find your lane in that you know but for for my future i would you know hope to get to like an agency you know creative director level you know where i can have my own and and go out and get these clients and have a couple designers under me or that 
can you know that can help bring uh, a project to life or you know give give this brand uh you know uplift or a rebrand or you know kind of like make that that person's life a little bit easier visually so you know hopefully you know when i'm in my 50s or 60s i can like sit back and kind of like uh be like the puppet master and show yeah. you know people that you know no this is the right way this is the wrong way and um you know still still be involved you know like i'm i'm always a hands on like i have to be in some capacity i have to do something in a project i can't just sit back and watch it happen like i want to i want to be there and i want to get my hands dirty and i want to make sure that you know things are going properly or at least how the client wants it to be so um that's kind of like my end goal i, I don't know when it's going to happen i feel like i have so much more to learn in yeah. this industry and and you know when it happens when it happens you know i'm not rushed to get there but i'm taking the steps that i need to to you know know like have the knowing of like okay i'm ready to be here so let me make the next move and and kind of like you know whatever that is just make that move when i'm ready or when i feel i'm ready or when the universe says i'm ready sometimes <laughs> you know i didn't i didn't expect a lot of this shit exactly to to me. i mean you know? this this whole year has been like uh whoa you know yeah when it rains it 100%. pours and then the, then you got like the droughts so oh my god the droughts hurt the most but i feel like yeah. you, you learn a lot in the droughts just you have to pay attention even though it's tough you just have to pay attention to those those small little details that can can really like make or break your career you know it's like some people get so discouraged it's like oh fuck this like i'm never yeah. doing shit again i'm just get my get a nine to five doing whatever and then you're even more miserable now you're stuck in the hamster wheel of, of yeah feeling and that's so. what's the worst part of it all you know like there's people that could do the freelance you know like like solely yeah. do freelance and live off mm-hmm. of that and that's great but there's other people like uh, for me for instance is like i find comfort in having the full-time gig you know that but yep, uh, same here but you know doing what you actually studied for so so then right, that you right, still right. actually enjoy you know what you're doing from nine to five kind of thing you know right exactly yeah you don't want to be at a job that you're just like trying to make ends meet kind of thing it's just that's not where the goal is yeah you know? it's not yeah it's it takes a lot a lot it takes a mental toll on you especially oh, yeah. if you if you have this passion and 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 it's like for me that's what happened you know what i mean like three years doing security i felt that passion of just like man fuck this like i could be you know creating for 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 brands and this and that and i'm not meant to just be sitting here at a desk and then like you know signing people into the building yeah. you know because the building that i worked at was like a creative kind of building so i'm watching all these uh, people so you're just watching people like, do Damn. what you love yeah <laughs> yeah and i'm yeah. like fuck this man you know it's like you have to listen to that voice that that tells you it's like you're not meant to be doing that but you're doing this temporarily you know what i mean this is like a stepping stone to get yeah. you to where you want to be <clears throat> but it's like you can't have like the the i'm stuck mentality it's like you have to go out there and look for it you know what i mean you have to like make sure you're persistent with um with your goals and your dreams and like make sure you write them shits down and dude yeah all right that's, and, that's huge um yeah. recently it's just been something i've been doing it's just writing down goals like long-term mm-hmm. ones like five-year ones or just like short-term yeah. ones that you could do within like a week or two or a couple months and that just right. gives you perspective on like where you've been because like with anything, you know, like you set these goals and then you forget about them. And then a few years on the, down the line, you're like, dude, I don't even know what I did. You know, like I haven't yeah. done anything. But when you have these set goals and you actually know that you're accomplishing them, then you feel mm-hmm. that sense, sense of like purpose and accomplishment. Right. You know, and then, then that keeps you motivated to keep going, you know? Absolutely. And those, even if it's like some people don't have the the, the capacity of thinking so far into the future, it's like, I feel like I, I can think into the future and like, okay, this is what I want for myself. And I know that I have to like build to get there, but like some people, they don't see that. So, which is fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, but make those short term ones, you know, like things that you can accomplish, like you said, in a month in two months and three months and six, like make those a priority, like write them down and make sure that you're doing things to, to reach that. Cause otherwise you're just writing bullshit on a paper that, you know, you're, you're like, trying to like uh you're avoiding it almost yeah. you know what i mean 
And it's like, no, you write them down and it, that makes them real. And now you have to um, commit and, and do it. You know, you have to hold yourself accountable to, to the things that you write. So um, once you have those goals and you'll see that once you start reaching them and start ticking them off and you're like, holy shit, like, I, okay, I, I worked with this person. I always wanted to work with them. Boom. Then the next one, whatever it is, like. Yeah, just, just going down that list, man. Up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then that develops you more as like it, you're, you're simultaneously kind of like honing in your craft and you're kind of like um, you're sharpening your tools because you're completing these like short term goals. And then at the end of the day, your people are going to start coming left to right because they see you on the right path. Yeah, man. I mean, that kind of just goes into then advice for like designers and photographers coming up. I mean, <clears throat> couldn't have said it better myself with like writing down your goals and then like making yeah. sure, you know, the business side of the industry yeah. that you're getting into, you know, and follow yeah. the people that you enjoy, you know, like people that yeah. inspire you. Like you're, you're, those are like the best kinds of teachers for sure. Absolutely. You and know, sometimes you'll, you'll be able to get uh, connected through, you know, like social media. Is yeah. I was just going to say that. I like, mean, we're living in a world with social media where we could just hit up right. any, anyone now, you know? And, yeah. And that's like the point of this podcast, you know, I, just to connect to any kind of designers or anything to show people like you could talk to anyone you want and learn from them yeah. on how they got where they got. Cause not right. one, not each story is the same. Like if anything right, that right, I've learned right. with the 20 odd people that I've already talked to is just, each had their own path to get where they are. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's never, it's never a straight line. Don't no. go into it thinking it's going to be because you're going to set yourself up for mm -hmm. failure instantly. It's never a straight line and reach out to those that, that, you know, are maybe on like a higher level, but not as high where it's like, you can't. Yeah. Like where all. you're kind of colleagues in a sense where you're like right, going for the right. same thing. And then you mm -hmm. don't, you never realize that, they're more than willing to help you out. Right. Yeah. It's just asking, asking the questions and the right questions, you know, yeah. like have write those down too. Like, you know, even if it's the same questions for every person that you admire, just throw them out there and, and, and see what their response is back. And, you know, on the other end of that, if you're at a, at a high, uh, kind of like a decent spot in life, you know, don't turn those people down because, you know, you can, spark something in them that they need at the time you know what i mean so like if someone were to reach out to me it's like hey how do i get started which has happened you know how do i get started what camera do i use what yeah you know, what what are you doing or like what what's your style or you know i i do not hide anything like i give all the sauce out like because you know that's how uh pe i've learned from people you know i would ask the questions even if i'm uncomfortable asking i would ask them anyway just because like i know that that's gonna improve whatever i'm trying to do and take their their knowledge and kind of like soak it in and, and make it my own so yeah. you know if if someone ever you know reaches out to you or or says like hey i need help with this or how do i go about doing this it's like what's the harm like what are exactly, you hiding like, like... If you, you have to be confident in your own shit that whatever they do they're not gonna take your work you know they're what they're not I mean? gonna it's do like... the exact same thing you're doing you know like it's like exactly. the whole whole aspect of like when it comes to painting, like getting the best brush or or whatever. Right. It's like the tool doesn't make the artist. The artist, right? You know, makes the art. You know, it's just yeah, exactly. The tool is just gonna either make it happen faster or in a different way. Like, like yeah, yeah. Just never focus on the gear or anything. It's just focus on what you're actually doing. Whatever's in your head, yeah, bring it out. You know exactly it's just and some people like your your mind is like not the same as someone else yeah, so yeah they're gonna take that information flip it turn it and and do something else with it you know what i mean so what what's the harm in that like what's the harm in sharing knowledge or something that if i can help you get from a to b um in a short time because like i've learned all that in between um why not you know what i mean yeah. like obviously there's certain things that you need to learn and you know the universe will take care of that. They're going to, they're going to eventually have to go through those, you know, like uh, struggles or whatever it is. But if there's like the one thing that's like, I know it took me forever to learn. Let me give this person like a little tip to like help them, uh, you know, get there quicker, you know, but I also like throw a little knowledge in there. It's like, Hey, yeah. 
I learned this the hard way. So like, just be aware of like, this is what the the timeline of like how I learned to do this, you know, it's not gonna come overnight for you. Like you, you need to like work at it as well. Yeah. And, that, and with that, it goes back to like the whole reputation thing. Cause yeah. If people know that you're going to be the helpful one or anything, you have like that kindness in you, who knows that even like that person that was asking you for help down the line, they'll probably have a job ready to go for you and give it to you to do, you know, like all all these kinds of things happen so many times. Yeah, man. Like all these kinds of things happen to good people because they get in these connections they are being helpful. You know, when you, when you're like this and you're just giving out good, like positive energy out, it's going to come back to you eventually, you know? Yeah, I mean, and don't worry about it coming back to you, even if it doesn't. Yeah, like, yeah, just it, do you know what, what you got to do, just, man. Just be a good person. Don't try to, like, hide stuff like, oh, this is my style, like, and don't get offended, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I, I'm not going to give you my tri- my tips and tricks and all of that stuff, because at the end of the day, they're going to figure it out on their own Yeah, somehow, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. You're just shortening the time of when they learn it, you know, it's, it's just, I, I, I hate you know, the people that, that kind of like, nah, I'm, I'm not going to help you out. Like, are you kidding me? You're, you're doing the same thing I'm doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's so, like the whole like uh idea of like a scarce, like they think there's scarcity. Like there's, there's not yeah. enough jobs out there. I mean, right. Right. <laughs> I mean, you're with the internet, dude, you could like get hired by somebody all the way in the other side of the fucking world and make money Absolutely. that way. You know, like, it's not like, yeah you're only fighting for the little jobs around you anymore, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's anywhere, anywhere now. It's like you can have a a client hit you up randomly on a DM now. And and it's so easy to get in contact with you. You know what I mean? It's no longer just emails. Yeah, man. So that's, I never understood that whole mindset. So yeah, I I mean, I'm glad we're both in similar in that way where we'll just help anybody Mm -hmm. out and, and have them get where they're going yeah. you know yeah because i know i know how hard it is you know yeah it's dude. so discouraging there's it can tell you the amount of times where i'm just like man am i doing like is this for me you know what i mean like, yeah is, yeah am i am i on the right path or like i can't even like pay my bills next week like this fucking sucks let me just get a regular ass nine to five yeah. and mickey d's or something <laughs> and and it's like that that other voice is like nope like just keep keep going yeah keep going yeah. and that's the point of the podcast yeah it's just to get these kinds of people out there so people could see where they could actually head out you know like i'm not only gonna yeah. obviously i'm not only like um talking with illustrators i want to talk to all kinds of creative like different like, industries because there's so yeah. many out there i mean people are even building their own like lane it's crazy I mean, TikTok yeah. has made it a whole thing. Uh, my buddy Devon, oh my, God. my my man got millions off of TikTok to just oh. drawing people on the train station, and now he's like That's killing so it out crazy. here, man. I probably have seen that. Oh yeah, I'm sure you have. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. He, I mean, it was through through the pandemic. He got super like huge. I mean, it, and it happened within months. Like TikTok has that crazy <sighs> algorithm that. The way it works. I yeah. mean, my brother, he has like 500k followers on that thing. Damn. And like, I'm like, I can't even fathom that. Like, you know these people, but then you see them on their online presence, and you're like, what? <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. So there's just yeah. there's so many things you you can do now, and it's always good to like connect with all kinds of people and see what they're doing in their industries. Yeah, man, and all walks of life. Yeah, like we were talking about earlier, like you get hit. You can have that one thing at 50 years old and, you know, have another thing happen to you at 17. Like, it doesn't yeah. really matter. You know what I mean? It's just you have to stay consistent. And enjoy the process while you're at it. Enjoy the process. Yeah. 100%. That's the most important is enjoying the process and, and don't get so caught up with yeah. I need to be at this at this age, I, I'm supposed to have, you know, such and such. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Cause... your your timeline for life is fucked if you think about it like that because it's like it's never going to happen when you yeah because then you're just stuck in that moment in time then it's just like you're focused on how you don't have the job where if you were focused on actually working at at your craft then the job comes you know but right you know it's just those things that you got to learn as you go and hopefully this this podcast teaches that sooner rather than later when it's absolutely it's not going to be too late but 
it just so <laughs> happens a little yeah. earlier on in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel you. All right. So we're back now to the last question, which is one of my favorites. Um, is there any movie recommendations or recent ones that you've seen? Man, <laughs> I got my little list here ready. Let's for get, let's do it. Let's see but what it's you like, got. It's like, I got, I got just like, I'm, I, me personally, I like old school, like gangster movies. Oh, word? And for some, for some reason, it's, I don't know. It's one of those things where it's just like, I love looking at like old New York and like how people were and like right, uh, right the the dress and and like the the swag and it's all like it's all different, you know. I'm gonna see if you got now. one of my favorite movies on that list. If if that's like <laughs> the vibe you're going for, let's see, let's hear it. My my top top favorite movie is Goodfellas. Okay, yeah, and that's uh, that's yeah. the one that's like I can watch if if it's on on TV, I'm gonna sit there and watch it no matter how many times <laughs> I've watched. Yo, it. I can't even like <laughs> la- like I can't even like hear that name and not laugh because my girl will text me like every other week, like you want to watch Goodfellas? Like it's her oh favorite God. movie, <laughs> and I'm just like, dude, let it go. We've watched it no uh, plenty no. of times, you know. <laughs> so it's just like, all no, right. That's- you know that's that's, one of my favorites, that's my life man right, like, at this moment good, good. <laughs> you have a good one um uh, what's what's um, what's the uh, other ones on your list um so i got american gangster okay one of my all-time favorites as well um i got donnie brasco another gangster movie oh um, yeah have you seen that one yeah well i tried but it was like i watched it while i was in bed and i started falling oh, asleep man. dude that's like that's the kind of movie it's, that it's a long one yeah yeah it's a long one and then just like with this the score of the the music and then he <laughs> him For himself sure. is always not sleeping so it's just like you damn. would you would think that the gunshots would wake you up during the in the in the middle of those did uh, not man scores. i had that full blast in my ears and i was out like a light i don't damn. know damn no you got to that's one you got to watch and pay attention because there's yeah. a lot of things that that happen uh kind of subtly so yeah, yeah that's one of my um one of my tops and then i like stuff uh i'm a big like i didn't even know this but there's i'm a big leonardo fan okay. for some reason i just i don't know why but i just started noticing that i love all the movies that he's been in and like inception shutter island catch me if you can like those like kind of like deceiving kind you, of movies you've seen that, like, it? think twice of course. Oh, dude. Hell yeah. He was amazing that was, in that. Oh, my God. Man, that one was a solid movie. I got to rewatch it. Do you know about the fact that he actually ate a raw heart for that what for that shot that he's actually, like, eating something? Fuck. That's a, that's yeah. straight up raw meat. I'm like. Oh, man. That's dedication to the role right dude, there. Dude, yeah. And then in Django, when he's, like, when he smashes the glass, he actually cuts his hand, but he oh, keeps I, I, going. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, Yo. like. That's he's like a one whole of the, different one of the breed. actors do it a Yo, whole different breed man for sure for sure and he, he kind of like he's one of those those uh actors that just get so involved in the in the uh in the in the role yeah kind of like jim carrey you know what yeah. i mean it's like those people that just like yes yeah, kind of switch that's like i am that person now like don't don't refer to me as like my per- yeah. like my actual government name like i am this role now another one and that's like that those, is um uh jake gyllenhaal like he's like super method in that sense where it's just yeah. like he'll get into that role um yeah i mean this is kind of so much respect for actors like that man. yeah it's crazy this is kind of like a city kind of movie like that you would be into did you see nightcrawler the one the one that he's in i haven't but i've i've heard little things oh, here and there about dude, it that i feel like yeah. you'd be super into it man like All so right, basically the premise is just him at he's like a news not a news reporter, like he just goes with his camera, like during like the odd hours of the night, and like yeah. films like all the gun gun violence and like people oh, getting shit. murdered and shit. And then it gets Damn. to, and he's really weird in it. Like he's a he plays a weird like act, like guy, and then yeah. he just like starts doing some sketchy shit just so he can get the what? shot and everything, dude. It Oh, it's man. great man like that's a like i gotta watch that it's one of those sure. movies that i buy like i bought just so i could have oh wow ready to watch whenever that's like a big yeah. you know like before you used to like just go to blockbuster and like yeah you know, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah but now it's like for for you to like actually go out and buy 
uh, uh, an actual like DVD or whatever. I don't know what they're selling nowadays. Uh, Blu-rays, like, yeah, Blu-rays that's like are the thing. Blu-rays. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I don't know. It's like that's such a big deal now. Yeah, like, yeah. You have to really love something. The same thing with music. You have to really love this artist to go out and buy it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. You can, download whatever and or like stream it we have some real quick yes, and then forget we're, it we're spoiled man i mean i grew up in the yeah. age of limewire if you didn't have oh, a limewire yeah yeah if you didn't fucking have that you were out and there buying. <laughs> i was out here at fucking 13 year old downloading all kinds of shenanigans off of limewire why wow, your computer you got you <laughs> yeah your computer got yeah AIDS. your whole computer is like off oh, fucked i did that to my grandpa's computer so many oh, times oh man oh man that shit was fucked up for sure yeah i mean me. but what else did we know you know like that's where we had to get our music i didn't know any better yeah, yeah it's like where else it was for me it's like i would go to the av and like um and get like a burnt disc or you know <laughs> yeah. like go go to like hey i'm trying to buy like 50 cents album and dude you, like, right and that was know, like a everything big will deal be the too. same but it's like one of those like slim those slim cases that yeah. will, like print out the cover put it in there yeah, and like, like on burn a, the CD just like regular copy paper they'll print out the yeah, cover regular and ass it. paper <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my god dude yeah, yeah that was another big thing it was like and it's like yeah because like with limewire too you could just burn it onto a cd so you could like have it on yeah. your cd player and shit oh man those damn that was bringing oh, yeah. me back <laughs> Yeah, that was the day. I used to do man. that. I used to do that with ringtones too. You bring right, the next bell to the right. you know, the Coliseum, and you and they um, just record it. You like... ask them. <laughs> yeah, they'll, no, they'll, they would connect it, and they would you know put the MP3 in this, and then oh, put shit. that little Not... section that you want. No, it with me, it was like I had to record it on like the voice recorder to get the ringtone. Oh yeah, of course. That's what I did. That was when that that was when you started getting like tech savvy. It's like yo, I don't yeah, want to be yeah. spending like a dollar a, a ringtone because i want several different songs for right like, right you know so you mean? just go so and I, blast it on a yeah, speaker exactly. and then you and record it so <laughs> um let me see if Man. this one's on your list because that's the one i was thinking of but i haven't heard it yet um taxi driver you seen that oh yeah i mean that's a classic dude. is that on your list though i have it's not on my list ah uh, but, but that's i old new york it. bro i respect it of course yeah, yeah. But it's like one of those. I mean, I know you've done art for that, so I know that's why. It, yeah, it's, it's one like of my weird. top ones, and I, I like I, that one. It was just like I a portrait, but I, I want to redo a a piece for that. Like that's on my list. The Nightcrawler pe- uh, movie. I want to do a yeah. poster for, but then you like you see like the actual posters that some of these come out with, and it's just like, yo, I can't beat that. Like that's for that fucking yeah. movie. Like that's like some iconic of the, poster. Some of the art. Oh my god! Some yeah, of the art from back in the day is just like dude. Like, what? there's some movies that I don't even bother touching. Like any of the Star Wars movies, like yeah. their posters. You know, Struzan yeah. <laughs> owns it. Uh, all of the all these people, uh, Paul Shipper, like, and then there's Indiana Jones. I don't really like want to touch. Like Back to the Future, I'll do portraits yeah. for it, but it's just like like, you like got when when you mention posters, when you mention man. those films like i i think about like tight faces you know what i mean exactly like, like you, the iconic so I'm ones thinking you know, about the, and it's hard to like, like has, tackle that and and make it right. your own you know like how do you one up that you know Cause, what I mean? yeah because like, then if you if it's at any point if it's off by a little they will fucking wreck wreck you in the comments oh, of course <laughs> of course they'll be like what the fuck is this shit yeah what were dude you thinking? yeah <laughs> Yo, so how do you but, feel you know, about? Because like, I know you do a lot of product photography, with, like with like streetwear mm-hmm. and stuff. Like, I've seen like shoes that came out. Like my buddy got the ones for Alien. They came out Reebok and a- the movie Alien did a did um a collab that they remade oh, yeah. uh the Reebok that she wore in the movie. Oh shit! Yeah, then, like, that's been that's been popular too. That, yeah, like, re releasing um kind of like iconic footwear from like movies and stuff, which honestly like they probably don't even think about that it's like whatever stylist is like all right let's grab from here from here from here yeah and like, here, yeah i mean like up. the big They're one never thinking about that the big one was like forrest gump man i mean the iconic yeah, shoe Cortezes? yeah i got that from my girl because yeah. that was that's her favorite movie and everything yeah and Those, yeah um, red and blue dude i think Cortezes, you would make yeah. I, I think you would make some dope ass like product photography if you mix that with like a film i would love to see that man yeah hey let's work on something yo let's do it dude i'm so down <laughs> <laughs> all right so i'm always down to like to like um 
just like brainstorming oh yeah with man it's the best little passion projects dude it's the best especially in passion projects because you know you'll get that done asap because you're so into it yeah yeah um, exactly all right so what about anything recent that you've seen um i've been watching a lot of shows recently so i don't know like a movie for me to sit really sit down and watch is kind of like rare right now i don't know like i haven't well, it doesn't like, have I, okay. So let's open it up then, like TV shows, like that you've gotten really into. Um, right now I've been watching like the Wu Tang Saga, which is cool because I'm like looking at it from, uh, uh kind of I'm looking at like their their dress, like how they're dressing from back in the day. Yeah. Like, the other day I was watching and I was um, I was talking to my girl. I was like. I wonder where they sourced all those like old school like Tommy Hilfiger and Polo and all that kind of shit. So that's like where I'm thinking about when I'm watching like uh, TV shows and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I've watched like the Squid Game thing, and it's I don't know, in my opinion, a little overrated. But it's a dope really? concept. I love I love looking. Yeah, I love watching stuff and like like thinking about like the concept behind it. And I'm like, I love the concept. That shit is dope. Um, and it it took a long time for me to really get into it. You know what I mean? To really right. realize what was going on and maybe like fifth or sixth episode, I was like, Oh shit. Like I was like, Oh, okay, now so, I'm in But into you it, finished now... it, right? Like Yeah, I finished it. I mean the ending yeah. the ending got me. Uh aside from what the like the last like five minutes of what they did, I was like Yeah. Uh, I really? thought the ending was trash. I yeah, like, but like the th- I mean obviously it's open it opens it to like a second uh, to know, a second season, season right and everything but um but like oh uh, man no um, like I was like, like right on, before bro. that like the episode before that and like what happened like after they won oh, yeah. and everything and I'm like yo that see that that was a good twist. I was like that got yeah. me. I was not expecting that. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. like my, even the third one, like with with the dude's brother and all that. I don't want to like spoil. Yeah, yeah, that. that's why I'm just so saying, fresh, like you know, ambiguous. But like, yeah, but that that I was like, oh shit. Yeah, Man, dude. Was yeah. Legit. <laughs> yeah, and like the, it takes a lot now for like me to get that surprise factor into it. But that one, yeah, that one was good. I mean, it was, like uh, Parasite. You've seen Parasite yet? I haven't. I haven't. Oh, that's that's one I need to sit down and watch. I know. I, th- I, know. I think you it's on Hulu it. right now. You could probably watch it on Hulu. It is? Yeah. All right. or, I'll, I'll go look at that. Or I think um, if you have Amazon, I think it's on Amazon. Oh, okay. man. But that's another oh, one. Oh, one that I've watched that I really like blew my mind that was like such a dope concept was uh, The Boys. Oh, yeah, I was, dude. I was like, holy shit. I was fixated on that for, you know, I binged it. Yeah, I man. Watched, that like, was two episodes three episodes a night and i'm like when i'm getting to like the last uh the second season i was like all right now i gotta like stretch this because i don't want it to end yeah so i'm like yeah. yo it was it was one of those that i was so impressed by like first of all i love gory shit like that so i was like oh my god this is hilarious <laughs> how they have like fucking people's heads blowing yeah, off and yeah. like guts everywhere <laughs> like this is amazing um but it was it was such a dope like storyline and kind of like concept of like what happens to heroes if they have like a you know if like they actually live like with that. us yeah like if it wasn't Bro. like oh they just got the power out of nowhere it was like no yeah. it's all genetically made and like in exactly. a exactly because that made it so that, much more realistic of like of, of that possibility twist was, yeah that twist i was like Wait, for the second season <laughs> yeah 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 or, or like even yeah i mean that I don't want to fucking get Yeah, no, like, we'll stop I there. Just, I mean, <laughs> just watch it. I was just so, I was, yeah, I was just so impressed by, like, where they took it. And, yeah. Like, how they, how they, like, fleshed out each story and, like, you know, see, like, the, the kind of, the, the humanizing of yeah. these superheroes and all that stuff. Have like, you seen Invincible? Humanizing In- their issues. Have you seen Invincible yet? Nah. Same, con- pretty similar concept where it's, like, the yeah. bloodiness of, it's just now it's an animated show but i feel oh, like you okay. would dig that a lot man um the guy that Definitely voices uh, get the guy that voices omni man he's the the newspaper guy from spider for the original spider-man uh um, oh, shit yeah he voices him he's also he was also on whiplash that's pretty dope yeah 
He was like the professor in Whiplash. That was, that's like one thing I, I always kind of have in my back pocket. Like I wish, or maybe, you know, like that's still one of my goals I'm going to write down to like, I want to like uh, do voiceover for like oh, some yeah. kind of like bullshit cartoon or characters, you know, something I mean, of that. Yeah, sort. yeah. I mean, Fiverr, dude. Who knows? Maybe they'll get you. Yeah. Like, just just Shit. get a really nice I'm microphone and then like yeah. do, do that like sound or whatever. <laughs> Hell yeah, um, just do like a, a whole bunch of recordings of sound effects. And word, like, word. I, I just, just mess like around. random shit. Do the movie trailer voice. I, I always wanted, I wish I could do that movie trailer voice. That's oh, so iconic. Man. In a world. <laughs> yeah, I'll, start, I'll just start doing that for all my posters and like make an actual trailer for the poster and shit with <laughs> make, that voice. Imagine. Hey, why not? Yeah. Why the fuck not? I mean, I, I've had so many ideas for the podcast. Like, I mean, when I did the commercial for this podcast, that was I had yeah. a blast doing it. But when I did it, I didn't realize how long it would take to actually get those shots. I rented out oh, the space. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude, I rented. I'm like, oh, it's only going to be a minute video, right? So I'm like, two yeah. hours should be enough to get all the shots for this one minute. Bro, it, it was like 20 minutes before, like, my time ended. And I'm like rushing to get like the last five shots. <laughs> oh my god, I was oh stressing, dude. Because then like the other people were coming off. into the space right after, dude. It was messed so, up. Uh, I mean, at least now I so know. So you feel like the pressure and all that. Yeah, yeah. Like I want to keep doing like these little promos for for the podcast just to like get it out there. Because when people saw it, they loved yeah. it. You know. I mean, yeah. You put put a lot of work with it, but yeah, it takes a lot more time than. Oh than yeah, you than think. you expect. Um, it's a lot of behind the scenes shit. Yeah. All right, man. So I think we got what we got. It was amazing talking to you, man. Sir. I mean, I'm gonna see you tomorrow again. Likewise. In the grind, yes, sir. You know. On the grind, um, man. I, I appreciate. Slack. Yeah, I appreciate you coming <laughs> on, dude. Um, so let's just tell people where they could find you. Sure. I mean, my um, my Instagram is kind of like my last name spelled phonetically, so it's R double O B double E O um rubio um if not you could just put my name in there brian yeah, rubio yeah. and i should pop up um that's where most of my you know i kind of like loosely use my instagram as kind of like a portfolio but um my actual portfolio is um my first and last name dot com so um makes it easy to find me yeah. yeah it makes it easy don't try to get all crazy with all these names and yeah whatever but um yeah, I'm usually on on the gram. You can hit me up, DM, whatever. I'll answer any questions. I'm not a not one of these assholes. <laughs> I hope I made that point <laughs> yeah, clear. Yeah, yeah. It's like yo, just ask the question. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely uh, um, check Brian's workout, man. He, he has amazing photography, that. amazing designs. His website's fucking killer. Definitely check that out. <laughs> I appreciate right, that. So we are out. All right, guys. See you later. Hello.